Good evening. Today is the 5th of November 2022. I'm Thomas Sim, PA2066. I would like to bring you a uh, topic of discussion, some sort of a guesstimate and prediction uh, using the new voter numbers uh, for the percentage of sales of residential property over the NAPIC figure. Uh. Uh, let me begin. Hi, welcome to my channel. I am Thomas Sim, PA2066. Today, uh, I like to do a topic on NAPIC subsector uh, and this is uh, more zoom to residential uh, residential value for the concern that uh, of course we we are in the real estate agency practice uh, and residential property sales uh, is a source of our uh, stock and our income and therefore uh, going in uh, discussing and dissecting about this topic uh, for the benefit of listeners. Now, uh, this presentation, uh, I concentrate on the newly released uh, information on the general election 15, uh, which is the new voter numbers that they have released. Uh. And then can we use these new voter numbers uh, to predict the residential demand uh, and the therefore um, percentage of the residential uh, property sales in the total amount of the recorded NAPIC figures? Uh. Uh, let me uh, show you how I... Uh, arrive at this uh, analysis. So I refer to the figures uh, in NAPIC first half of the year, uh, which is uh, for 2022, January to June, uh, which has been uh, discussed also earlier on in uh, earlier video recordings. Uh. You can go back to the earlier video recording for listening into some of the figures uh, on NAPIC. Uh, overlapping with the agency um, regional distribution. Uh, huh? So those are the earlier uh, topics and you can go back to listen to those recordings. And this particular pack for the recording uh, is uh, more for using the uh, new voter numbers uh, that we are able to get from um, recent publication. Uh, this is from the edge. So the edge uh, on the GE15 uh, voters breakdown in fact uh, short that uh, yes I put a arrow here 1.394 million uh, huh? new voter age of 18 to 20 years old uh. so let's say we round it up to 1.4 million uh. Uh, this uh, new numbers uh, is able to maybe tell us the demand for housing as well as uh, likely percentage that it could contribute uh, to the total residential sales. So let's say uh, this uh, figure, we round it up to 1.4 million and it is on the 18 to 20 years old, which means three years, uh, the three years population of the young voters uh, would be averaged out at about 467,000 new numbers. Uh. So these new numbers quite similar to the reported figure before for the numbers of students in SPM coming on every year, like the number of candidates for SPM every year, close to 500,000 for the Malaysian population of about 32 to 33 million. And let's say we uh, use uh, half, half, 50% uh, uh, men and 50% women, uh, we will likely, uh, if they all get married, uh, uh, then we will likely get 235,000 uh, of uh, families. Uh. And this, of course, won't happen immediately on the age of 18 or on the age of 19. So this demand for 235,000 houses uh, per year, I would like to massage the figure again, uh, trying to give you a logic behind it. Uh. So let's say we build a household in 10 years. So this 18-year-old um, young Chap uh, would likely get married in the next 10 years. What would we see uh, in the likely uh, progress of this population? So it is gradual, of course, from 18 to 20 years old. From the bottom, uh, no household, you can see uh, from the bottom, no household, everybody remain a single until they all get married at 28 years old over 10 years period. Uh. So this is gradual. Of course, the likelihood of everybody getting married is um, high but not uh, absolutely 100 percent 
So let's say we take fifty percent of them getting married eventually, then only uh, taking into fifty percent of the people getting married. Of course, in the real world setting, this percentage should be higher. This percentage should be maybe close to 80-90 percent. I do not have, but some people will get married beyond 30. Some people will get married beyond 40. And some people being single also, they will buy property rather than a need of a family, a roof on a family house. So therefore, uh, this assumption is just basic on very fundamental um, purpose of uh, having a family, uh, going and invest in a property. So average 50 per uh, percent of uh, forming household means to us uh, in this analysis, uh, 235,000 household divided by two, uh, close to about 117.5, uh, that means 117,500 household uh, demand per year. This is a guesstimate. Uh. Of course, 18 years old may not get married on the 18 years, but averagely uh, may get married at the 26 years. So on the 26 years, he uh, get married, probably everyone get married at 26 years old, then that particular year uh, would have a high uh, marriage uh, rate, the household building will be even higher. But generally, we will just take a uh, likelihood of 50%, uh, and this 50% will be one to time or, or multiply by the average price of a house or a property, a residential property. So this is on a chart uh, given by first half of 2022, NAPIC um, chart showing a uh, subsector residential property and you look at the higher um, value um, transacted and also the volume of transaction uh, is on the lower end housing which is below 300,000 or 300,000 to 500,000. So we understand that this portion of the property uh, would likely build up the most um, chunk of the sales of the whole country and let's say we establish uh, the total value here 65,250 units uh, because this is in units uh, of a price of 300,000 on the upper end and 27,480 units uh, of the 300 to 500,000 so both sides uh, we will take the higher total so in a nutshell we would assume the affordability reported in the category saw for residential property in the first half of 2022 as in the following the number of units saw as you saw just now in the bar chart times 300,000 for that category we arrive at this figure 19,575 billion at the same um, calculation is performed for 27,480 units uh, of the category of 300 to 500,000. We will take the highest uh, maximum, uh, which is 500,000, to arrive at 13,740 billion. And the total of these two is 33,315 billion. And uh, the total of the units uh, we would uh, put in as to divide by 92,750. So this uh, calculation uh, would give us the average price uh, for the higher um, portion uh, of the category uh, would be at 359,269 per unit residential home. So let's say we use this assumption uh, to calculate the demand uh, for the house um, buying uh, by half of the population that would arrive uh, at the 42.034 billion huh? so this is 117,000 times the 359,269 uh, unit cost per house so is this figure uh, close to what is reported uh, in the NAPIC uh? so the first half 2022 NAPIC figure uh, actually reported residential sales uh, by sector subsector is at 54.1% of the total. So this 54.1% is obviously more than what we have forecasted just now using the estimate at 29. So let us go back. 
So this figure is actually uh, 42.03 <clears throat> and this is half a year which is half a year at 45 so that means we are almost uh, missed out by half a year huh? so I will show you the comparison now we go back to the last many years huh? almost 20 years huh? we understand that the NAPIC presented the figures on um, subsector and we take the residential so if you take the residential every year roughly the average is 49 percent of the total value transacted uh, in malaysia at about 49 percent so this 49 percent or 50 percent we build it to 50 percent uh, is the average uh, for the last 20 years uh, of uh, transacted value of residential property within the whole year our, our figure which is 42 billion if we take it as a performance of 2021 then it's only at 29 percent huh? so this 42 billion uh, from the new voters number is only able to give us 29 or 30 percent whereas the real realistic figure is 50 percent so how do we uh, analyze this uh, figure the deviation uh, from the 50% which is uh, shown as in um, past history. Let me um, give you a few possible assumptions and also predictions. Uh. So my thinking is that the 1.4 million uh, new voters uh, at 466,667 in numbers uh, divided by two having form family of 235,000 families uh, demanding at uh, current moment for 50% and at 359,000 ringgit per house uh, this total number as we just calculated at 42 billion uh, is based on demand of 50% and this is only at 29% of the residential value if we use 2021 and whereas the reported value in 2021 for residential property uh, is at 53 percent so this 30 to 53 uh, is actually a almost 24 percent difference uh. now why uh, it may be so is because likely uh, there is a higher percentage of demand by the saying that uh, as we progress uh, from 20, uh, 20 to 28 years old or even to 30 31 years old most people will get married and most people will be in demand of a housing so the 50 percent chance that uh, people don't get married uh, is actually uh, way below the real figure lah. so the real figure should be probably 70 80 percent and that will check up the 42 billion uh, to higher percentage which could be 50 or 40 over percent Another reason is uh, possibly there is a higher average cost of the house uh, 359,000 uh, types of housing uh, probably is not uh, very common nowadays in bigger cities uh, and the potential buying of this uh, condominium is always uh, in bigger city more than 500 to 600,000 per unit uh. so that is likely the reason also that the cost of uh, residential property has gone up and therefore uh, the percentage uh, contribution by value should be uh, higher the third reason i would think so is that there may be one person buying houses a single person without um, forming a family and uh, may also buy houses so therefore the multiple house uh, buying situation uh, with one person buying two houses or single person not uh, supposed to get married or not going to get married or there is uh, other reasons not wanting to get married still uh, able to buy house and therefore uh, it, it contribute uh, to a lower percent chance uh, I was I was assuming it is a lower percentile the other reason is that uh, we were using the concern of uh, 18 to 28 years old uh, and likely we are not supposed to uh, look at this as a limitation there are people 38 years old and 48 years old are still buying houses so beyond the age group should be included as well and therefore uh, this figure of uh, 1.4 million uh, within the 18 to maybe 
um, 20 years old group uh, may not reflect uh, the actual number uh, of the population uh, buying houses throughout the nation. And therefore, the 18 to 28 years old uh, may look at uh, it as a minor group uh, in uh, ability to purchase uh, housing. Uh. So let's say you build the population to a more a bigger, broader um, percentage, uh, maybe close to 50% of the population, then uh, it may uh, be able to reflect a better prediction of the actual uh, residential subsector. Uh. The other reason I think so is that the family um, transaction uh, from parents to children and all those things are not uh, taken into consideration uh, because uh, the family may have other houses that is inherited by the kids uh, and therefore the kids are not buying. So these are of course uh, again uh, uh, not uh, supposed to be contributing uh, to the housing demand but then there is an uh, overload uh, of uh, buying. And this overload of buying up, uh, in fact, uh, are building up the figures uh, of 30% uh, uh, up to 50%. Because uh, parents are buying for children and their parents' uh, age group are not in the 18 to 28 years. Uh. So these are my analysis and good to um, think about it as a way to understand the residential subsector. Thank you very much. I am Thomas Sim, PA2066. You can see my mobile numbers as well as uh, some of the work that I have done in my websites. Thank you so much.